everyone, on this episode of Coding with Kate, we are actually going to be talking about ICD-10-CM, or the Diagnosis Code Book. I have only done one video so far of how to use the Diagnosis Code Book, and I thought it would be very helpful to do a video that solely talks about the language and the conventions that ICD-10-CM uses. And I will also have a video and other videos of a closer look at the Diagnosis Code book so you can see how it's organized, how to navigate it, how much information and guidelines they offer. So today we are going to focus on that language. So the first term or terms you will see in the code book is the main and sub terms. So these are the searchable words in the alphabetic index. So when you look into the index, you want to find your main term, which I talked about in the previous video. I'll have a link in the description. And within the alphabetic index, those will be bolded. And then the subterms are indented below them, which give more detailed information about that main term. And we have non-essential modifiers. And it is a term or series of terms that appear in parentheses following a main or sub term. So with the presence or absence of them has no effect on the selection of the codes that is listed for the main or subterm. It's just supp supplemental information for you. And then we have eponyms, a name for a disease, organ, procedure, or body function that is derived from the name of a person. So it's really cool with ICD-10-CM. Some diseases or illnesses are named after a person, like Crohn's disease, Alzheimer's disease, Barrett's, things like that. So in the alphabetic index, you can look under those names or the actual disease that it is. And within the subterms under those eponyms, it will give you the actual disease or illness name. So it's very cross-referenced. So if you aren't sure what Alzheimer's disease, what ICD-10-CM calls it outside of Alzheimer's, it will direct you to that correct disease name. And then we have C and C also. The C is a cross-reference note or a look elsewhere before assigning a code. It gives direction to an alternative term and it is mandatory. So if you see C, you have to go to that term that it gives you. Usually this is for the eponyms or some other terms where it doesn't give a diagnosis code right away. So it just tells you to see this other disease or this other infection. And then when you go to that term in the alphabetic index, it will give you that term and that code. So then you can go into the tabular list to find it. The C also is a cross-reference note. Review of another term if all needed information cannot be found under the first main term and it is not mandatory. So if you see the C also notation, you don't have to refer to that term. If you want to, you can. It's just letting you know there is another code out there that might provide more information because it is most commonly associated or connected to the term that you're searching for. And then we have NEC or not classified elsewhere or not elsewhere classifiable. When a specific code is not available and a more general description is only offered. So you will find NEC when you are talking about terms that say other peritonitis or other cystitis with hematuria. So it's basically telling you that there isn't another code that gives a really detailed description that you're looking for. So then you would just use that NEC term because you can't find a code that has that other information that you need. And then we have NOS, not otherwise specified. When healthcare provider does not offer any detailed information to allow for a more specific code selection. So sometimes you will find that the healthcare provider doesn't tell you what the infectious agent is and you could if you wanted to query the provider, but what sometimes happens is they just don't know what that infectious agent was. They were unable to find it in the lab work or it wasn't present in the lab work, but they know that that caused whatever illness or infection. So at that point, you just have to go with the NOS diagnosis code. And then we have square brackets and slanted brackets. So in the 
alphabetic index and the tabular list. You will find these types of brackets after the main term that you're searching for. So the square brackets enclose synonyms, abbreviations, alternative wording, or explanatory phrasing. So that's just giving you more information because the healthcare provider may not have used the term that is found in the book, so that's just telling you, here's some more information that might be the words or language that your healthcare provider used. This is what it means and this is what it's associated to. And then the slanted brackets are manifestation codes representing a secondary condition that is present in addition to the underlying or primary disease. This provides sequencing direction and you must code the slanted bracket second. So whenever you see a main term and your current diagnosis code and it is followed by a slanted bracket with a italicized code in the middle, you have to code that one also. That is telling you these two are connected and will always be connected and that you need both because the original code you're looking for does not have that second code information within it. You need a separate code to fully describe the diagnosis that you want. So you have to use that second code. Then we have excludes one. Excludes one basically means anything that is on the list that is directly after the excludes one notation. You cannot use this diagnosis if anything else on this list is also in the medical report. They cannot go together. You have to pick one. Usually it's because they are two conflicting diagnoses where you literally can't have both at one time. And then we have excludes two. This is two codes are applied when both conditions are present because the list of excludes two terms are not included in one code. So you will also see excludes two and then a list. This is basically meaning that anything on this list is also included, but you need that second code because it is not provided in this main diagnosis code that you are searching for. It's another way of saying code also, if anything on that list is also present. And then we have code first. So code first will come up in your tabular list if the diagnosis you are looking for has that notation and it gives you another diagnosis. No matter what, you have to code that code first diagnosis first. This is for sequencing direction, meaning that code first diagnosis code has to come first and then the, the code that you're currently looking at needs to come second. And then we have code also. So with code also, it's another sequencing direction where they're telling you there's a second code that is needed, but it doesn't have to come first. You can put it second. So you'll be referred to a different section of the tabular list to look for this other code, and then you just put it second or third or in whatever order it, you are at. So those are some of the conventions and language that is used in ICD-10-CM. There are some other more specific and nitpicky conventions that you'll see in the code book and in your courses, but there's no need to talk about them here. I just wanted to cover some of those big ones because they might be a little confusing. They look like they mean something, but in ICD-10-CM they mean something else. And it can be a little confusing, but once you get it, it makes a ton of sense and it's super easy. Well, thanks for watching. Go to the links down in the description that will refer you to the first diagnosis coding video. I will have more to come. I will see you in the next video. Bye!